Hey, what up guys? How you doing? It is Lasty here. Welcome today to a new episode of the FIFA 20 Ultimate Team Road to Glory. Messy celebration style as always every single day and I know a lot of you comment about it as well. It's just become, I guess, iconic for the series and I have to do it. But welcome to episode number 48 today. Uh, if you do enjoy, do me a massive favour. Hit that thumbs up, show your support on the series. A lot of you love it, so if you can hit that thumbs up, that would be amazing. Uh, and of course, don't forget to sub to the channel if you're new. You can click the notification bell next to it as well, which means that you'll never miss an upload and you'll become part of the notification squad, which obviously I see a lot of you in the comment section always letting me know that you are a part of it. So uh, you guys, I love you. Uh, so we're going to start this episode off just by, we're going to sell this Usman Dembele for 33 and a half. So a little bit more than what we actually uh, paid for him, although we, we moved his position and stuff. Uh, the reason why I'm doing it is just because I noticed that there was a very slight difference between the regular gold one and the blue version. It's exactly the same card. It's just a different color. Uh, now, we're, we're going to go and buy this. One, because I think the blue version looks cooler. Why not? Uh, two, the price difference was really not much uh, in between it. Three, it might scare my opponents a little bit more. I don't know. Uh, and four, main reason is that I just feel like this one might be able to hold its value a little bit better than the, than the gold version. Um, I, I don't know. That might not be a thing, but really in, 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 in total, it's cost us about 4,000 coins to upgrade or something. So not a big deal. Um, but we now have a, a blue Usman Dembele over a gold one. Now, uh, as you can see, the other one did sell. We already saw that because we were able to afford the, the new one. Uh, but a bunch of the other Swedish stuff sold from SBCs a few days ago. Uh, that's just been sitting on my trade pile for a while. Now, uh, we have a couple of SBCs to get stuck into before, of course, we finish off our weekend league. Um, I, I'm not sure if these were from like Saturday night or Sunday night, but the daily SBCs, um, when we get them daily anyway, the, when we get the, the puzzle SBCs from the screen promo, they're not every single day, but they have been fairly frequent. Um, they've been basically my favorite part about Scream. The Scream teams itself, they're cool, but I don't really like the card design, so I'm a little bit reluctant to get any of those players in my team. I know, that's a weird thing to say, but like... I just, I'm not a big fan of the orange and the green and the or, orange and black. I don't think... I would prefer it if it looked like a skeleton, like black and white. That would be cool. Um, anyway, uh, we're getting off topic. But these have been like kind of the best part of the screen for me. Low-risk SBCs that uh, we basically offer out a half-decent pack where you can risk it to maybe get something good. I know I've said that a few times, but I just must reiterate. Like, if you're not doing these SBCs, I think you're doing something wrong. Uh, you should be most definitely taking advantage of these. You've probably got the stuff to complete them in your club. So from the very first pack, you can see that that... The showering of stuff is, is a different color to the regular, uh, so it means that we're going to be getting ourselves an inform, uh, and it is, of course, going to be this guy, Troost Ekong. Now, I mean, it's a discard inform. It's, it's nothing to write home about, but from doing that SBC, risking a tiny bit, probably some untradeables, some bronzes and stuff, what we've done is got ourselves guaranteed at least 10,000 coins and some other players from the uh, to go into the club and some consumables, you know the drill. Uh, and then the second SBC is also going to be slow moving. Unfortunately, not a walkout, but just a board player. Um, and it is Swiss centre-back from Dortmund that is going to be a Kanji. Now, at the time, I was like, yes, 25k. And then I realized that the market has gone down since the first couple of weeks of FIFA. And he is now like 4,000 coins, maybe even less than that. So we are going to keep him. That is a, it's definitely one pretty, pretty darn good first owner Bundesliga player that we've got there uh, as a center back, should we need it. Now I did a couple of things off camera, which ended up getting me like a, a pack or two, uh, basically did like the, the squad battle stuff. Um, just because one, I wanted to get up to like gold two in squad battles Two, I wanted to get through some uh, some some season progression a little bit more. Obviously, we're, we're getting pretty close now, uh, under 10,000 XP away, as far as I'm aware, uh, to to claiming ourselves uh, either Taliso, Zaha, or Lucas Vasquez. Now, uh, a lot of you have already got them, so GG's to you. But yeah, we've been taking it a little bit easy on the season pass because, you know, there's no rush. And I think we've easily done it with enough 
XP to spare, and we will get it this week, I'm sure. Um, but we get to level 28, which is the Nara Inc. Um, is it a stadium theme? Yeah, and the next one's going to be the Nara Inc. Tifo. Uh, and then finally, after that, we'll hit level 30. But we're 12.5k points away. I'll get under 10k either in the rest of this episode or early for tomorrow. Uh, and it's just by doing things like the, the weekly gold, bronze, and silver uh, challenges. They're a lot easier this week. I feel like EA are definitely helping out people to potentially get that last minute xp should they be a little bit further behind so that's nice uh, it's not like score a left-footed bicycle volley kick header with someone from um senegal who you know has a three star weak foot and seven star skills so i'm glad that they're not like that but uh you know they're, they're still gonna be somewhat challenging i guess you know like uh, in the week five gold there's a couple of chip shots and or finesse shots and stuff that you got to score not too difficult but it is going to gain you that XP, so I definitely recommend getting up there. But in order to get up to gold, uh, uh, to get up to silver and to gold, you're going to need to play squad battles in each section. So don't think that just by playing online you're going to get them done. Have a quick look at your objectives to make sure you get past bronze by playing a squad battles match, past silver, and, and, and so on and so forth. So, um... Uh, we now obviously come to Sunday afternoon, which is when I decided to take on the rest of my games. Being 11 and 4, I was pretty happy with the previous day's uh, result. You know, we'd, we'd, we'd done well to to go like, I think we ended up going like 7 and 1 or 8 and 1 um, after a really, really bad start to the weekend league. But I get matched up against someone who is clearly a Liverpool fan and had King Kenny. And also a couple of other very good players. He even had a screen James Milner. That's probably the first and only one you guys have ever seen uh, in anyone's videos. Because who did that SBC? It was way overpriced. Anyway, I quit at 2-0 down. And I was like, that, that was obviously not a great motivator for the rest of the day. Losing your very first game. And due to a rage quit as well, I just feel like I was getting nothing against that guy. So uh, why not just get into the next match? I have games to spare. And I just need to get three more wins to get up to 14. So, uh, you know, like... Just the, the super hard matches where I go a few goals down, why not just get out of them and move into something which could be a little bit easier for us? Um, you know, be a, be a little bit more efficient with our time. So, uh, this game is 1-1. I scored first and then my opponent scored again. Uh, and then he goes 2-1 up with Mbappe. And I realised when I was looking back at a lot of these clips from this day that... I was just defending like an idiot. I don't know whether, like, I tweeted out at the time, it feels like a completely different game that I was playing because I did feel like there was more button delay or, you know, delay in registering button presses and whatnot, uh, whatever you want to call it. Um, uh, it just felt like a completely different game. I also tweeted out on Saturday that the game felt great uh, and actually I had really no issues with servers. You might look at that and say, well, last you did great on Saturday and then you've done poorly on Sunday. Is it just like an in-your-head thing? I don't know, maybe, um, but I've had weeks where I said that Saturday gameplay is awful and uh, and then Sunday gameplay is is much better and I've done, or no, yeah, and I've done much, much better on the Saturday than I have on the Sunday when the gameplay was better. So uh, I don't think it's just an in my head thing. I, I'm, I'm trying to be like impartial when it comes to that and actually give feedback on what how I feel like the servers are feeling anyway we lose right at the very end uh, and I was absolutely raging I'm not gonna lie uh, it, I, the way I lost that at the end was just abysmal in my opinion I, I hated it I hated everything about it um, so we've lost two games in a row to start our little Sunday session of champs off so really uh, at this point I'm starting to get triggered I'm starting to lose my cool um, <laughs> and we go 1-0 down in the next match and it's just like I think my head falls off it my head goes on a on on a jet plane to Australia and I'm just over here somewhere in England you know so it's just yeah I uh, I really started to lose it but we equalized on the guy and then Mbappe is able to hit the finesse shot green uh, at the near post and we we do manage to go 2-1 up um, but can I keep hold of this game you know I've got a better team than my opponent here and I'm winning however uh, Keita Balde Dial was apparently a player which I can't defend against. I know we had it in the previous episode where Jamie Vardy was one of those players, uh, but it seems that the, there is a growing list of players that lastly can't defend against. I think it might just be all half decent players on FIFA, to be honest, because I am pretty awful. Uh, but yeah, we end up going 3 2 up very, very luckily. Like the way that Mbappe was able to use his body to end up keeping.
keeping the ball there uh, against stronger defenders is just not great. But hey, it was happening to me all weekend long as well. Uh, and then Keita Borde Diao, you know, I thought I was fairly comfortable in this match towards the end, but he gets an equaliser. And this, this game's going to go to penalties. Now, I missed my first one by hitting the underside of the crossbar, but my opponent misses his first one as well. So we're both missed, and then he saves mine, so no one scored yet. Uh, and then uh, he comes up and scores to go 1-0 up. Advantage my opponent at this point in time. I score with Goretzka, he steps up and scores. So it's still advantage to my, to my opponent right now. Mbappe steps up. Scores again. Uh, we just need to save it so we can level things out now. And we are able to do that. So it's not advantage my opponent anymore. It is basically we are even. And then I score a lucky one. So this is advantage last year if I can save this. No, we're drawing, we're drawing. Uh, Neymar steps up. And uh, there's something about Neymar's run-up which is a little bit too long. And I mistime it. And I just bottle it. I, again, Like if he scores here, he's won the game. Casemiro steps up. Sticks it in the corner and we end up losing a game. Uh, three games in a row. Wow. That's uh, it's kind of unheard of. I don't often do that. Um, so fully and utterly triggered at this point in time. I was ready to give up the weekend league. I'm not going to lie. Uh, but we go on into another one. Uh, this guy's got Joe Gomez. He's got Nesta. He's obviously done Nesta from Icon Swaps. And an overall nice team. And I go 1-0 down after 8 minutes. And again, I was just ready to, to not play this game ever again. Uh, but we get like that, don't we? But anyway, Usman Dembele... <clears throat> The scary blue version is able to <laughs> equalize for us. 1-1 one, one at half time. And we can push on into the second half. Usman knocks it out wide to Sissoko. Into Mbappe. And again, a little finesse shot near post. It seems to be one of the only ways that you can... Uh, if you've got someone that's half decent at shooting, make sure you try and use that, that shot type. Because it actually curves around the defender and they don't get that AI auto block. Uh, which is actually really useful. We then end up going 3-1 up. First time shot there from Usman Dembele. Lots of power behind the ball there. And uh, and we're actually two goals up in the game. And I'm like, if I, if I end up losing this one, I'm done. I'm not going to be playing. If I lose this game from being two goals up, I, I shouldn't be allowed to play. Uh, anyway. Things are looking good because he decides at that point to just rage quit. Uh, and, uh, and yeah, we, we come away with a victory. We break that horrible uh, streak of losses. Uh, and we're now up to 12 wins. Just two to go then. But I decided that I would change formation. Because the 4-1-2-1-2 is simply not working for me. I don't think so anyway. So we're going to try the 4-2-3-1 again. And it does mean that Ben Yedda comes into the squad over Musa Sissoko, I think it was. So we're going to start on Dombele and, uh, and Guardiola as our CDMs. Ben Yedder and Usman out wide with Neymar and Mbappe as the central cam and the striker. Uh, and, I mean, I thought I'd pressed it to go <laughs> to go into the 4-2-3-1 in this game. But I'm pretty sure after after I get the eventual rage quit from my opponent in this one, I realised, oh, I'd only pressed it up to my 4-1-2-1-2. <clears throat> so, it turns out Ben Yedder was playing centre mid for me in this game. And, uh, and I was just playing 4-1-2-1-2. But, I, you know, it worked. So, fair enough. You know, we end up getting, I think, a, is it a 3-0? Look how lucky that is, man. And look how, oh, he doesn't block it. He just falls to the ground. Uh, it's awful. But a 3-0 rage quit after 29 minutes. It felt like maybe I had broken this unlucky streak. Uh, and as you can see, I was actually playing the 4-1-2-1-2 there. Um, but, you know what? Uh, in my head, I was in the 4 2 3 ones. I don't know what what was going on. I was literally all over the place uh, mentally in, in this game at this stage because, things have not gone how I wanted them to go um, but next game and what is hopefully going to be our final game of the weekend league we come up against a really strong squad uh, he's got Hazard, Theo Walker, he's got Kante, uh, wants to watch Ben Yedda. and this was a very slow build up player uh, who had loads and loads of possession against me and I went 1-0 down just before half time and when we got to half time I, thought, I think I decided that that was just enough like look at, look at the stats, I was getting battered, I was getting destroyed <clears throat> so I just decided to forfeit and uh, again we just need one more win so I'd rather it against someone that I can actually beat than someone that's going to give me a really really boring long game so we go into this match. Another solid squad. He's got player of the month, Aubameyang. Lots of other cool cards in the team as well. Uh, and then Werner, right off of kickoff, two minutes in, I just forget to track him and was tracking like the pass, the, like the, you know, the interception route and stuff. So Werner run, runs through and scores. But we get kind of lucky uh, with the ball that Mbappe manages to keep in his possession. And we score a, a smasher off the bar with Neymar just a few minutes later to equalize in this game. 
And I realized at this point that I think I had the team and stuff to outdo this guy. Uh, ben Yedda ends up getting the strike, comes off the post. Very lucky for Mbappe to get the rebound. Uh, but it was kind of unlucky for Ben Yedda's shot to not go in, I guess, right? Uh, and then Mbappe turns the defender nicely. Just cuts in between both of them and then hits a finesse with his weak foot. 3-1 up after 28 minutes. A couple of goals in the lead. My opponent decides that he is out of there. He's had enough. And that is going to be our 14th win. So in that particular game, I was working quite well with the 4-2. 3-1. So I think um, I think we're going to stick with it. It's either that or we move back to 4-4-2. Uh, but again, we're going to need the correct players to work with. And I'm very low on coins because all of our coins are tied up in Mbappe and Neymar pretty much. Uh, so, you know, we can't really do a whole bunch until we get rewards and stuff. Maybe hopefully get a couple good packs during the week. So, you can kind of ignore the player bio on, on the likes of Usman and stuff because obviously I did play like five or six games of squad battles in order to, to get up into certain ranks and to complete certain objectives. Uh, but yeah, we, do, we are still loving Neymar and Mbappe. They are both absolutely fantastic. And I think even before playing a few squad battles matches, uh, they do have incredible goal-to-game ratios, no doubt about it. Um, ben Yedda is someone that maybe I'm not... I, I don't love him as like a wide cam. I don't know if he's got the sort of pace that I need out there. Uh, but I would be reluctant to push either Mbappe or Neymar out wide. I just don't know if that's worth it. Uh, but we're probably going to be adjusting the team around anyway. That that right-hand triangle, the uh, Ndombele... Um, Dembele and Ben Yedda triangle is something that we can change around to work on like the Urzel objectives or the other weekly objectives and stuff. So, you know, when we're in division rivals this week, we'll probably be uh, trying, to uh, trying to get some coins together so we can buy players like German players that can help us get goals to get Urzel and stuff like that. So the team will look mainly the same, but just with that top right side of it getting changed up in order to complete objectives. Um, yeah, guys, do me a massive favor. Smash that thumbs up as we come towards the end of the episode. Uh, and of course, don't forget that you can follow me on social media, my Twitter and my Instagram. Links are down below. I appreciate any of you guys that do decide to come follow me. That's awesome of you. Uh, yeah, subscribe to the channel if you're new and click the notification bell. And most importantly, I hope you all have a wonderful day. I'll catch you tomorrow with another episode. Peace.